but it's time. Tea time. Yeah, this is tea time. Make a difference. One cup at a time. Tea time. So be sure to grab your tea, grab a seat, and tune in to Miss Liz. Tea time. Make a difference. One cup at a time. Well, welcome to Tea Time. And that's right, Miss Liz is back. And guess what? We have a rescheduled Tea Time. And we have the incredible husband and wife team joining Miss Liz today. And we're going to be talking about sacred geometry. And we're going to get some of the divine connections, alignment, all of that good stuff out today. And today's tea is trans transform energy and authentic. We're going to talk about those three words with uh, Gail and Gregory. Um, but before we get started, we're going to get you over to Miss Liz's YouTube channel and podcast apps and, and give those little quick subscribes and follows and all that good stuff and share these tea times out with people and your friends and loved ones that it might resonate with. Uh, these tea times can be listened to in the morning, afternoon, evening, in your home, in your car, at an event, if you're bored. Again, Miss Liz did not recommend that. But if you know you're you're at an event and you just want something different to listen to or a little picker upper, Miss Liz has over 300 different interviews with different guests from around the globe that you can listen to. But today we're going to talk about some energy and we're going to talk about alignment and connection. And you know how much Miss Liz loves that. So let's get the disclaimer out there. Let's get some bio out there and let's get this husband and wife team in here and let's share a good, strong cup of tea with all of you guys out there. Disclaimer for Miss Liz's Tea Time Live Show. Miss Liz, myself, is going live using StreamYard. Before leaving a comment, please grant StreamYard permission to see your name at StreamYard.com. Please be advised that the content brought forward for any Tea Time show hosted by myself, Miss Liz, is always brought forward in good faith. However, may bring forward dialogues and opinions that are not representative of my platform. The facts and information are perceived to be accurate at the giving time of airing. All Tea Time guests and audience participants are responsible for using their good judgment and taking any action that may relate to the discussion. The content brought forward for any may include may include discussions for some where they may be emotionally at risk. It is significant to know that this show is engaging in discussion forums only to offer and inspire awareness and connection and is not providing therapeutical advice. If you have any questions about the disclaimer or the panelist discussion, you may freely contact me, Ms. Liz, through my email at bookingmissliz at gmail.com moving forward should you choose to voluntarily participate in today's show in any aspect i myself miss liz welcomes you and should you decide that the show is not made for you at this time i respect those wishes and we'll see you at a later show at a later date and time and again all tea time shows are hosted on thursday 3 p.m and 7 p.m eastern standard time unless they are rescheduled surprise or special tea time which you'll find on a monday tuesday wednesday that's right miss liz is monday tuesday wednesday thursday but my main day is thursday so now a little bit about my guests. Well, who do I have sitting in the back? I have the incredible husband and wife team, Gregory and Gail Horge. I hope I'm saying her last name right. If not, I'll get them to say it right. Scient uh, Gregory is a scientist, best-selling author and, ar and artist, has researched sacred geometry and consciousness for 47 years, followed a major spiritual awakening, Kunana, in 1982. He started creating energetic tools through metaforms that provide trans transformative tools to foster spiritual elevations and the expansion of source. His land in Colorado Rockies has numerous energy, vo vortex, and strategi strategically placed geometric forms for the purpose of activating the planetary grids and energizing some of the tools produced by metaphor. He's recognized as one of the leading experts on sacred geometry technologies for improving health, raising consciousness, reducing stress, manifesting intent, and clearing emotional electronic manic, magnetic interference. Gail is a health consult consultant, accomplished artist, spiritual advisor, and businesswoman. Her studies of light, color, and energy is motion in her paintings, launch a deep understanding for creating transformative fields to expand consciousness, developing her intuition gift, gifts as an artist, healer, and spiritual counselor. She has assisted many people to embrace life more fully, 
Gail has also served as a business consultant and team building trainer in corporations. Gail was an avid student of R. Buckminster Buck Fuller and knew the intrinsic values of sacred geometry when she and Gregory met in 1985 and founded Metaforms, realizing their life mission to bring sacred geometry energy tools to the world. Let me get Gail and Gregory in here. And if I've pronounced anything incorrectly, I will get them to pronounce it for me. Welcome guys. Oh. Hi Liz, good to see you. Thank you for having us. Why can't I hear you? Oh, your mic gone? Can you hear us now? Yeah. I can hear you now. There we oh, go. Good, 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 good. <laughs> thank you for having us. We're glad to be here. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I am I am glad that you guys are, are joining me today uh, and that we were able to reschedule this incredible tea time. So I'm going to get into, I'm going to take you guys back a little bit on how I get all my guests to give a little bit about who they are. I'm going to start with you, Gail. Who were you as a little girl and who are you now as a grown woman? <laughs> oh, oh. What an interesting question. <laughs> as a little girl, I was... Um, very interested in what was going on in the universe. I used to love to look out at the stars and the, the skies at night. And I was definitely a dreamer. I was um, a, a little girl who wasn't sure how I got dropped off on the corner that I ended up on with my family. I felt kind of strange. And so I was looking to um, really learn who I am. Um, I was always a very intuitive child, an artistic child, and I was trying to understand where my home was and how I could fit into it. And I would say that as an adult, I am, <clears throat> I am still, you know, a very artistic person, um, very much involved, as you could see in the book, in understanding the cosmos, understanding where as human beings we fit into this whole amazing scheme of life and looking for deeper understanding, asking questions. So I think that that thread has always been with me. And when I was about three years old, I had this um, epiphany. It was like this experience where all of a sudden something just sort of like just grabbed my attention. And I knew that I was meant to make a difference, that I that I had something to do here, that, you know, there was a contribution that I was to make. And I didn't understand what it was. <laughs> so as I've been progressing as an adult, that's been part of my uh, purpose is to do something that contributes to this life, to this world, to humanity, and and to the soul, um, the progress and evolution of soul. And Gregory, who were you as a little guy and who are you now as a grown man? <laughs> oh, <clears throat> I love to play with, it's like, I'm going to say what I am doing now is playing with energy and the way energy flows. And I did that as a child, <clears throat> except I worked with water and the way water flowed. I'd go to the beach. And when I go to the beach, I would take lots of buckets and shovels and I'd enlist all these kids to help me dam up streams on the beach. And if someone came along to break it, I turned those guys into the policemen and say, you're in charge of making sure no one breaks this dam. And, you know, I would really get into it and how the water flowed. And then I did believe in other dimensional beings, fairies, for a long time. And as I got older and went through um, a Kundalini experience in my early 30s, 
that's when I started opening up to actual energetic beings that do live all around us. And I was able to communicate on other dimensional levels with these beings more deeply. And that's what led me into working with sacred geometry. I didn't even know it was called sacred geometry. I was just building the geometries that I was being shown from the higher dimensional realms. And when I met Gail, I had a box of these with me and I shared them with her. And this was in 1985. She was in the garage of a house that I had just sold. And she was going to be working with this house as a studio. The person that bought it was allowing her to do that. And when I shared with her the box of geometries, she could feel energy coming off of them. And because I started out in the sciences and then started backing into this whole realm of working with geometric forms to move energy, it had me perplexed for a long time. I'd go, really? How about this one? You feel energy from this one? And at any rate, she helped ground it. And together we started Metaforms in 1985. So that was over 40 years ago. And yeah. we're still working with energy and higher consciousness and connecting to the higher realms and bringing through new information all the time. Awesome. So for anybody that doesn't know what sacred geometry is, could you guys let us, uh, let my listeners know what it is uh, in case they're interested in getting to know more. And then we'll talk about the, 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 I'm, I don't even know what to call them. What's spinning beside you. <laughs> uh -huh. I, I just, I just did a blank guys. I, I can brain freeze here. Miss Liz. Uh, I don't know, man. But it, we'll talk about uh, the, the signs that are in between you and Gail as well. But for my listeners out there who would like to know what sacred geometry is, if you guys would like to tell us what that is. Okay. Well, I will give you sort of an easy, generalized way of looking at it for somebody who may not know what sacred geometry is. And so, you know, everything starts out as just pure, formless energy, right? you know, before it manifests and comes into the physical realm that we're familiar with. Well, it needs to have a very precise pathway in order to do that. And so there's certain rhythms and cycles and patterns and, and ratios and all kinds of things that the universe uses in order to channel this energy into these amazing different things that we see around us you know, whether they're flowers or trees or our bodies or rocks, birds, whatever, everything is based on certain principles. And sacred geometry explains what these universal principles are. It shows us how creation really works. And the ancients understood this. So they would build their temples, pyramids, cathedrals, um, you know, different sacred sites utilizing these principles. And what that does, it's, it's like a doorway for us to be able to be more than just these physical bodies, because truly we are more than just what's in this physical realm. That's just a very small portion of who we are. And so working with sacred geometry is an opportunity for us to expand to reach into these other levels of who we are, to become inspired, to recognize what it is for our souls to come into this physical experience. And yet the soul is still what's directing this play. And so the, the book that we wrote, which is called Sacred Geometry, The Universal Language of Divine Alignment, explains, it talks about how this works and we talk about consciousness and all kinds of things, numbers 
and show you lots of, of pictures as well to help you understand what sacred geometry is and why you might want to learn more because it's very important in understanding how we are a part of this incredible creation that we're all living in. So Gregory, did you want to share a little bit? I, 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 I'm, I'm doing a brain freeze. I, the symbols that are spinning beside you guys, uh, what do we call those? Okay. Um, we call them geometries, forms, metaforms, because that's the name of our business. And so what Gail was talking about is that the way universe creates everything. I mean, um, for those that can see images, I can share a few images with you if you like. Sure, and, absolutely. Okay, let me go here and then um, let me go down to, oh, I know, I've slipped into another <laughs> set of images, but um, like some of these images with everything from snowflakes to the way turtles are formed, the way galaxies, the way molecules are formed. I'm going to go down to here. These particular spirals are formed based on a certain ratio that if we look at the human body, it takes the distance from our hand to our elbow, our head to our navel to our feet. These are all proportions that exist in nature and they exist throughout our body. So if you, for example, take, I take just the first digit of my middle finger to my whole finger is in this proportion and my finger to my hand, my hand to my elbow. And so this is the way universe works with life energy. All life, everything from plants to insects to animals, everything with that spark of life within it works with that particular ratio. So when we work with some of these geometries that are sitting next to me and bring that into the environment and spin it so it's working with time, it starts working with some of the same energies. And furthermore, it's fun, this form at the bottom also, if I can find that image, it works with the way the sun and the moon work together. Uh, and so I switch my slides from what I meant to put in. So it's taken me a while to find some of these images. But if you take, there, eh, maybe that one. If you take something like, here it is, the diameter of the moon plus the diameter of the earth in miles, because everything in universe works in resonance. It's like a C tuning fork that will start to vibrate when you play a C tone. So when the diameter of the moon and the diameter of the earth are added together, we get this geometry next to me that I have sitting between us that also works with that phi ratio and works with the earth and the moon's diameter. So you see these frequencies, they start interrelating, they start affecting us. And there are so many things in our world today 
that block the natural order of energies wanting to come into us. All the electromagnetic fields, all the things going on with the fears that people are going through, all the judgments, all the stress that we're going through. These kinds of things added in with toxins, they block these natural rhythms. They block even us connecting to our higher self. And so by working with some of these tools that, and we call them tools because it would be like me giving you a hammer. It's a tool and you might crack a walnut. You might build a house. You might even hit your thumb and it's not the hammer's fault. But when you're done building the house, you built the house, not the hammer. But it, it so helps you in the process. And that's what these tools, these geometries, these forms, these energe energetic things that are moving energy into our environment. And they start affecting our fields and helping us connect where we couldn't connect before. And so it's an amazing journey we've been on for the last 40 years to help people expand into the larger part of themselves and connect more deeply into the soul level of being. So Gil and Gregory, what causes the patterns? in the flows because you brought in the flowers and the, uh, uh, the images of the flowers, Gregory, what causes that swirl? Okay. That swirl is this spiral that's created with this particular form or this tool, this caliper measures it. One side is bigger than the other side okay. and it's keeping that proportion going. So human beings, if we were to keep growing like a flower, like the sunflower, like a nautilus shell, we would start curving around too because our arm as the next piece that would grow out would be longer in proportion to the way all these other parts are growing. And pretty soon you start getting spirals going with nautilus shells, with broccoli, and what we were looking at in that one image. Even galaxies start to follow these spiral patterns. And as I said, the, the moon and the earth create that same ratio, even if I were to measure, put the moon next to the earth and measure from the center of one to the other, and then the diameter of the earth out to the edge of that triangle, it would again create the same ratio that is creating all life. So everything in universe is perfectly designed to work with consciousness, work with life, work with understanding how we can expand beyond this small character that we are here in this physical reality. We're much more than this. We're like the tip of an iceberg where only a little bit of us shows up here in this reality. The majority of us exists on higher dimensional levels, where our emotions live, where our mental body can travel. But we think we're focused here in between our ears and our heads, but we have the potential to expand into a very large space in the universe. You know, Liz, from, um, from our perspective, we sometimes look out at the universe and it looks very chaotic, very crazy. And yet what sacred geometry, what all of this with these archetypes and patterns show us is that there is incredible organization. 
It's very precise. It's very orderly. It's all a matter of at what perspective we're looking at it. And so, you know, for, for those of us who sometimes, you know, have concerns about what's going on in this universe, it really brings us home to understanding that from a precise moment, it, yes, may look very chaotic and random. And yet, when you draw back and you look at the whole, there's divine organization, there's understanding. You know, just like when something happens to us, you know, some kind of an occurrence, and we might be, you know, like really embroiled in that moment, wondering what's going on, why is this happening? But over time, when we relax with it, and when we honor the process, we can see that there's pattern and wisdom and something there for us to evolve with and to learn from. And so the universe is always teaching us just so much like what your podcast is about. Every moment is a teaching moment. And when we back up and we see things from that whole perspective, things begin to make sense and we can see where we belong in yeah. the wholeness of this amazing creation. Well, it, it, it's uh, it, sacred geometry is like time travel, right? Because it's the past, the present, and the future. It's the connecting of the dots, and it's it, it's the pattern that's flowing in these metaphors. Uh, the middle one is really pulling me for some reason. I don't know why, but I feel like I'm connecting with the middle one. I don't know. Is there a reason why I'm being pulled to the middle one? Like. Uh, maybe Gregory, you can answer that because I just keep my my focus is on that middle globe. Uh -huh. The middle globe, actually, each of the triangles is equal to the face of the pyramid at Giza, the major pyramid. And so it's and that pyramid face is, again, working with the phi ratio, that life energy. We call this the unity grid because it really is creating a unifying field, a unifying understanding. And, um, you know, I would say the T moment is teaching everything all the time. <laughs> and that's what's going on with some of these tools. They are constantly moving an energy field through the environment. And we found that it even works over time and space as you are there and we're somewhere quite a few, quite a few miles away. And yet time and space is collapsed when that energy is flowing and you can tune into it anywhere. And open your heart to those higher realms that have the potential to support us because that's where the love comes from. That's where the joy comes from. That's where our intuitive abilities come from, from the higher aspects of ourself. And it's the little person at the tip of the iceberg. That's the part that's controlled by ego. And it thinks it's totally everything that exists in its reality and yet it's only a tiny piece so that's why if we think that we want to gather things in this reality in this world that we'll never be completely happy until we expand into the bigger realms of who we truly are well, thanks for explaining that. And it actually makes sense, unity, because I'm big on unity, right? Bringing people together and connecting with mm -hmm. people, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, and and this is what this platform is for, right? Is to teach educational awareness and, and, and time travel and connecting those dots and understanding why the universe brings people together, why we're connected mm -hmm. for a reason, right? Why we found each other, you know? I could have anybody else here right now, but I have you guys here. I, and that's the message that I want to give to my listeners and audience out there is that, you know, people come into our lives for a reason and the lessons are there. 
um, you know, we just have to learn to open, open the mind and understand why we're being connected and why those patterns and cycles are coming together. Um, mm -hmm. Gregory, you mentioned something as a little boy, you played with water. Is there patterns and cycles in the water? Absolutely. Um, I think you may be familiar with um, Dr. Emoto and what he was doing with water where he would have people meditate, bring in certain positive aspects into water, and then he would uh, create snowflakes, crystals from the water. And he found water that was prayed over, good intentions were put into it, that it would hold those intentions. And likewise, some water that ran through pipes and cities and came out of um, kind of stagnant areas of water that it didn't have the same life energy. It didn't have the same geometry to it. And so when we look at a snowflake, what's interesting is that it's a geometry and he found that intelligence, consciousness, intent could improve the geometry and it works both ways. It's interesting to think that a geometry could improve intelligence, could improve consciousness. And so that's what we're playing with. But certainly water is energy flowing and energy, like Gail was saying earlier, it's all around us. It's like 99.999999% of everything is pure energetic space. Only 0.00001% is physical matter, is in the atom, is the proton, the neutron, the electron. Most of it is space. And that energy is dictating how everything in our reality is created and formed. And so when we start realizing that, we can start dancing with the universe the way it wants to dance. Instead of building a building or creating the things that we want to create just because, hey, we're human beings and we can do whatever we want to do, it's if we start following the patterns of creation and bringing those created, those patterns into our lives, we can start to vibrate more naturally with the way the universe is vibrating. And Absolutely. when we go into nature, we feel that energy and we know, yes, something is right as I sit next to the stream under this tree and the birds are singing and the wind is blowing through the leaves. It's a natural way of being. Yeah. Well, it's something like Gail said, right? The disconnect you know, building the building, it's disconnecting us from the energy. It's breaking those patterns, right? And the cycles. And we got to bring the cycles and patterns back together and, and go to the flows and, and that. Uh, the reason that I asked about the water, uh, Gregory, is because a lot of us are called to the water, right? When we need healing, when we need recharging, mm -hmm. uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, rejuvenating ourselves. We'll, we'll go to the, the flow of the water. Uh, for me, it's the flow of the tea, right? Uh, as it's flowing and and going, the connection is there. The flowers, like Gail mentioned, flowers and animals and that we're drawn to them when we need a recharge. You know, we turn to a pet for love, uh, support. Uh, it, it all connects. And I, I really wanna get into the book because the Sacred Geometry book, what, what can uh, people find in that when they grab their copies? Okay. So the book, as I was saying earlier, we start the journey out with a conversation about what is consciousness, even though that might not seem like anything to do with geometry. Um, but if we start with understanding consciousness and wanting to actually explore consciousness, because no matter what the form is, consciousness is involved in all of that. 
And we wanted to bring out that in this universal language and all these patterns, it's not just random abstraction. There's actual uh, intention, energy, consciousness that is the foundation of all life, of all creation. And what's beautiful is, is that energy, that consciousness is really love. And that's the creative energy. Love is the creative energy. And, you know, we are living in a time where we're seeing focus putting being put on what separates us as opposed to what brings us together. And what brings us together is understanding that we are all one. And when we can find our common unity, when we can find the commonalities that are at the baseline of everything, and when we understand that all life is created in that flow of love, then perhaps that helps us to drop some of these barriers and the fears and the things that have been separating people and instead come back into that harmony, that resonance and the quality of unity that's so important. And I really believe energetically that's what's happening right now on the planet, even though it looks pretty dicey right now. Yeah. And it looks like there's a lot of craziness going on. What I feel is happening with this flow, particularly astrologically, when we look at the Aquarian energy coming in, it's really coming back to that unity, that, that energy that will bring us back into harmony again. And so we start our conversation out with what is consciousness? And then from there, we talk about, well, what blocks consciousness? And that's really a big issue to identify what are the things that are out there in our lives, in our universe, from electromagnetic frequencies, the things that are coming off of our computers and our phones and 5G and all kinds of things that are being broadcast out in the universe. They actually um, create a separation because they're trying to dominate and get our attention. And yeah. that is something that we need to be able to take the time to be in nature, to breathe, to meditate, to put our feet in the water or take that cup of tea and remember who we are, to come back into center again. And so we talk about what blocks us from conscious, from that consciousness that is essential to our well-being. And then from there, we start talking about the different numbers. There's a wonderful journey that we take people into, starting with the number one and understanding how things progress from, from the beginning levels and then start growing in the creative process. And, um, and then at the end of the book, we actually end up with a chapter that shows you like these beautiful forms behind us. We've been developing and um, we have a business that is almost 40 years old that we've been doing this, where we've been creating all these different geometries. And the purpose of these geometries is to bring more harmony and resonance into our lives, into our environments. And so we have a chapter at the end where we show what these uh, different structures are and talk about how they really make a difference in people's lives. Everything from like pendants, like the pendant that I'm wearing, which is based on all these different sacred geometric patterns and inside all these antenna systems that are created so that what they do is they help connect us, connect us to all of who we are, not just a, a small part of who we think we are, in not just the labels that we put on ourselves, but the essence of who we are. And so having something like a pendant that you wear, what it does is it helps connect you to those higher realms, your intuition, your inner knowing, things like um, serendipity, you know, things like how, you know, we come together at the right time, at the right place, all kinds of circumstances. Yeah. So, um, you know, we really believe that we're in a time now where the more that we have 
experiences that bring us into resonance, the better off we are in our health and our well-being, our prosperity, joy, and our relationships. So, you know, that's a lot of what's kind of underneath the, the grounding of this book. Well, and as Gregory was showing those images, uh, you know, the crystals, even the crystals have patterns in them and flows, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, and we're called to crystals and, 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 and stones and, and minerals as recharge as well. Uh, you know, uh, we're, we're, we're being called to, to the energy, but for some reason we're being blocked from the energy because of all the distraction that's going on in today's world. Um, is there a way that we can open our minds to understanding sacred uh, sacred geometry a little bit deeper and break those barriers and take that step forward? Maybe people are scared of the sacred geometry. Could that be possible? Well, people are frightened of what they don't understand sometimes, but I haven't ever had someone, well, be totally afraid. <laughs> of the sacred geometry bottom line exactly what you're saying elizabeth it's important that we open up to what's going on on higher levels and that's exactly what we've been talking about is all the blockages that happen in this world it's really i think the biggest issue we face which is more serious than because we don't even realize that we're being changed as human beings, that all the technology, all the electromagnetic frequencies, the toxins, these fears and stresses are creating more sociopathic behavior, are creating less focus, are creating a disconnect from who we truly are inside. And when we are able to connect fully to that soul level that we are, then we can start expanding on our humanness. We can start evolving in consciousness. And that's really the opportunity for us today. Being on the planet, there's so much stuff going on and we have the opportunity to discern, is this where I really want to go? Is this what is going to support me in my growth, in my evolution, in my evolution of consciousness, in my evolution of love, in my evolution of compassion and connection? And so when something starts bringing that aspect of us, out, then I think we find we're on the right track. When we start finding that we have an opportunity to be more compassionate and shift what's going on on the planet, because we're not going to do this without each other. We need to connect and understand that we're all connected together. And we need to take those little steps of being conscious of how we're serving the good of all in yeah. all the things that we're doing. Well, it comes right back down to the way we serve, right? The purpose behind of what we do and the work. You guys have been doing this for over 40 years. It's the purpose and passion behind it to get the message out there. You know, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, a lot of my listeners are big on consciousness. I've had a lot of guests that have spoken on consciousness. Um, I think a lot of us don't understand true consciousness because of all of the blockage and the barriers and, and, and division out there in today's world. Um, you know, but as Gail was saying, the consciousness needs to be aligned. It needs to understand it. And it's the understanding, like, like you said, Gregory, we need to understand what we don't understand. We're, we're fearful of, um, you know, so I, I strongly, I, 
recommend that all of my listeners reach out and, you know, connect to one another, whether it's five minutes, it's 10 minutes, that connection really does make a difference. It really does open the flow mm -hmm. of uh, unity, right? Um, I, like I said, I'm being drawn to the form uh, in the middle. Uh, um, I, I just feel it really pulling me in. And I don't know if, if that's... Um, Miss Liz needs to be put, putting more connections together. I'm not sure what, what I'm being called for, but I just feel like I'm being pulled. I want to get into the T because you guys gave me three incredible words, transform mm. energy and authentic. I want to talk about each of those words because they are powerful words um, and they are a strong cup of tea. So uh, share a little bit on what transform means to you guys. Well, you know, transform is an essential part of life in the way that I look at it. You know, we start this journey as this tiny little baby that doesn't have language, doesn't have movement, you know, is just learning how to use their eyes and their body and all kinds of things. And what happens through the cycle of life is incredible transformation. You know, as we grow, as we learn, as we evolve, everything is about change. Everything is about transforming from what something is to the next. When we look at nature, nature through its different cycles is always transforming from season to season, from century to century. You know, you can see the evolution that happens. And so transformation is is really the cornerstone of so much. And this is a real powerful time that we're on where people are really recognizing that we're in a particularly transformative time on this planet, that we are seeing changes that perhaps other generations have never seen and never will see. So being able to accept that is really important to flow with it as opposed to being in fear of it. Fear is what separates us. It, it's, the, you know, it's one of those things that takes us away from being the loving beings that, you know, that we really are, from being able to reach this level of unity. So transformation and the acceptance of that and the, the joy of it, to joyfully look at, oh, What's going to happen next? You know, like I liked your question about who were you as a child and who are you now as an adult? Well, one of the things that happens to us as children is that we have so much joy and curiosity and excitement, enthusiasm for what's going on around us. And that's an important thing to bring back in yeah. our journey of transformation so that we can really move through it in a way of um, just being infused with inspiration and spirit. And, and that's the reason why I bring up that question for who you were as a young, uh, as a child, right? Because when we grow up, we go back to that childhood as we get older, you know, as we age, we become that child that we were when we first were born. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, a lot of illnesses that are out there, dem dementia, Alzheimer's goes back to the childhood. It, 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 those illnesses are telling us to come back to our younger self, come back to the playfulness, come back to the curiosity, uh, you know, and we shouldn't be afraid of these illnesses because these illnesses are actually speaking to us and telling us to align with ourselves. Um, you know, and I think that's where a lot of diagnoses are given out. A lot of illnesses are given out in the world today, but we're not understanding the message behind those illnesses and what's causing them um, mm -hmm. and that. So Gregory, I wanna, I wanna get a little bit into you for transformation, the transform. What does it mean for you? Uh, the center part of that T is energy. So everything revolves around energy. Energy is at the basis of transformation. It's when, energy flows and so everything in universe um, is about relationship and it's when you have relationship then energy can flow 
it flows between individuals when we create relationship and that's what allows for transformation to happen because energy is needed for transformation and energy flows and transformation happens and the end piece of this tea the authenticity of it is i think a, a really important thing that we need to take personally in all the different things that are going on like liz you've been talking about some of these diseases that happen if we look for the authenticity of it the root of it the god spark of it the part that is something we can learn from and that's really what it's about to me that's what authenticity is about we have to each really tune in to everything that's going on people actions places things happening in our lives and discern what is the truth of this what can help take me deeper into my truth of this and that's you being authentic with you it's like i saw something at the bottom of someone's email the other day um, that was by richard Feynman, who was someone who was involved in creating the atomic bomb and he said something to the effect um, make sure that you're not fooling yourself and the truth is you're the easiest person to fool and so the point is that we can sometimes fool ourselves but to get to that depth of authenticity and touch that part of ourselves at a soul level that allows us to discern what's the truth behind this disease for me what am i here to learn by this relationship for me what am i here to learn by this accident this happening this good thing this bad thing this other thing all the things in the world that interact with us it's so important to be able to discern what is the truth that exists behind this happening in my life because universe constantly has our best interest in mind in the universal mind so if we realize that then perhaps we can discover the gift from the universe in every single moment that we're alive and be present constantly accepting the joy of each moment because this is a gift from the universe it's our presence that allows us to see it you know something else about authenticity that i'm thinking about right now is that we are each one of us is very unique and yet what we show in this book is that we're all cut from the same cloth we're all based on the same foundational principles and yet for instance just like with a crystal or a snowflake or anything that you see in nature every flower you know you can always tell what a rose is but really every rose is just a little different it may have a different fragrance it may have a different color it may have a different size or shape everything has its own unique expression and so part of our journey as a human being is to find what is our authentic being who are we we don't need to try to pattern ourselves after anybody else at all because the truth is that we're really all pattern from the same foundational principles so that's already handled but then the question is as we transform through energy 
how do we become more authentically who we really are? How do we authentically express the energy of soul? How do we authentically share our gifts and be of service? So authenticity to develop the aspects of who each one of us is uniquely is an amazing journey and a gift that we're given as being a human being on this planet and in this time or any time because we do time travel, don't we? <laughs> we do. <laughs> time travel is not something to be afraid of because we all do it. We all have a past, we all have a present and all have a future. Whether we're taken at the any, tomorrow, we, we're still gonna have a future because we still have that legacy of what we left behind from the past and present that someone will speak of. So we will be in the future. You, you know, I. I, I really want my listeners and audience to understand that time travel and sacred geometry is a part of all of us. It's like Gail and Gregory has been saying through the whole show, you know, we are all uniquely uh, special in our own ways. And I find that in today's society, we're all being branded and, and told how to look, how to talk, how to speak and losing our uniqueness. And I want to bring it back. So I would really recommend this book for everybody to check it out and to go. So Gail and Gregory, where can they find this book? Well, a great place to find it actually is on our website. And it's right underneath of your frame. And it's iconnecttoall.com. And that's the letter I, the word connect, the number two, the word all, all.com. And then if you put in backslash chapter, it'll take you to a page where we'll give you the first chapter of the book, which is our conversation about consciousness. So we invite you to check that out, take a look at, um, at our book so you can buy the book from there. And we even sign the books when, we, when people purchase them from us. And then, um, also, as long as you're on our website at iconnectall.com, we've got wonderful things to look at. We have, um, we show you and talk about our different structures, our different tools that we've been creating over all these years. We have lots of YouTube videos and information and meditations and all kinds of things that, um, that we have to offer you. So um, check us out on iconnecttoall.com. Well, it's been a real pleasure talking with you guys and having this open discussion. I love open discussions, especially about time travel and geometry and forms and patterns, because I'm all about patterns and cycles. Uh, you know, I, I talk about the tiger. The tiger all has a unique uh, marking. You know, like you mentioned, the animals, not one of us looks the same. Not one of us is the same, uh, but we all are one in the end. Um, and Gregory, you mentioned about the present, the gift of presence. Uh, so what final message would you like to get, leave everybody with today with that message of the presence, the gift of presence? And something else when you were talking about we're all one, the snowflake is a very good example of that because everyone realizes that every snowflake is totally unique and different from every other snowflake. And yet when they melt, they all go back to the same ocean of water. And so it is with us. And presence is like when you talk about time travel, there are aspects of time travel that human beings lock into that don't serve them. And what I'm talking about is when we have something where maybe someone did some injury to us, or maybe something didn't turn out the way we wanted it to. And we keep remembering that. We keep thinking of the injury. We keep going into the past with our consciousness and we miss the opportunity at the moment. And we do that in the future too. Um, unconsciously, where we're 
afraid of what's going to happen. I'm going to meet this person. They're going to say this. I'm going to say, oh my God, what's going to happen during that conversation? It's making me so nervous. So we spend this time thinking about the past, thinking about the future in ways that diminish us, that bother us. And the only place where we find our true strength and our true ability to be totally on point is in the presence, in the present moment. And so that's the importance of being present. And it's, it's like a little child. When we were talking about being as little children, when we play, we are as we are. There's no pretense. And yet to play, we have to be totally present. We have to be totally engaged in whatever's going on in our world around us at the moment. Then we can play with it. We can't play if we're worried about something. We can't play if we're concerned about what happened in the past. We have to be present to be playful. We have to be present to be joyful and really be filled with that love of God that allows us to be passionate and giving with other individuals. Because if we're present, we can hear them. We can respect them. We can communicate with them we can have compassion for what they're going through, not because of being anywhere, but in the moment with them where they are. Well, thank you guys for joining me today and sharing this open conversation with me. Uh, for anybody who would like to know more about Gail and Gregory, please check out their website, grab a copy of their book. And if you have any questions or comments or feedback from today's conversation, please let me know. And we will uh, get those comments and uh, questions over to Gail and Gregory. Again, I want to thank my listeners who have tuned in today. Uh, thank you for your support. I really encourage you to keep checking out these tea times because there's more to come, uh, more topics. And, and we're going to make a difference with one cup of tea at a time. And in this house, we don't serve a beverage. We serve teaching educational awareness. So please join Miss Liz on Thursday for two more TEAs. And we'll do this all over again. And we'll connect the dots one cup at a time. Thank you all for joining me today. Thank you and blessings. Thank you and blessings.